first of all, I would like to thank you to, to have a chance to speak here. And it's a great pleasure for me because today it's going to be about various aspects of using open source software in computer aided engineering, which is uh, my, my personal passion for more than 15 years. And uh, I would definitely like to share my experience with you today. So let's let's go ahead. So uh, there is there are a couple of things I'd like to to show. So first of all, I have to say I'm gonna be pretty general today. So don't don't expect any special details. Uh, I'm gonna gonna show you just some principles I believe that are that are valid that are valid in especially in technology and in simulations. So please let me start with the statement that. I believe that the the open source open source is pretty everywhere. It's it's it concerns all the human activities. It's it's employed in in most of the devices and other software packages. And I have a personal oh, let's see idea that I, I believe that all the software eventually becomes an open source because it definitely has a lot of benefits. And uh, I think that more and more people are realizing it, and and that that's why a lot of lot of software nowadays is turning is turning, uh, is turning open source. Uh, yeah. So maybe are you are you are wondering why I'm showing these crazy crazy and little bit scary scary images? Those are images which I like next week, uh, I'm sorry, last week I created it, them in, in artificial intelligence software. I just wrote a couple of words uh, like open source of human activities and devices and uh, artificial intelligence, <laughs> right? Uh, software which, which turns the words into the, into the artificial pictures. It gave me a couple of them. So, it's also available open source. So that's and just another example how, how powerful software and open source software open source software can be. So you can you can do it and you can try it yourself. In uh, for example uh, in this uh, web address which is dream.ai, and you can you can try yourself what what images you can create. It's a lot of fun. And if you if you haven't tried so far, please please do that because it's it's really a lot of fun and if I'm I've enjoying I've been enjoying it so much. So yeah, so this is just a quick introduction just to catch your eye with these scary pictures. Uh, but anyway, uh, I believe that open source is everywhere and and it's gonna be more and more of it everywhere. <laughs> so that's uh, this. So in today's presentation, I would like to speak specifically about open source concerning engineering simulations, which is uh, this uh, special special field where 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 virtual design is being uh, simulated uh, on the computer with the help of simulation software. Uh, I guess you know it, but still, I'd like to note that there are hundreds of open source pieces in the in the field of uh, uh, computational simulations and there are really a lot of open source software pieces and uh, it's up to us what what we can do with them and uh, for years we maintain uh, this website where where we gather together uh, the most popular uh, open source software pieces and over the time it became quite popular and quite a lot of people people you used to used to come and get back and to check uh, what open source pieces are available and uh, in today's presentation i i would like to show some pros and cons and advantages and disadvantages of of, of open source software how how we understand it over over the over the time because the those many many questions are repeating uh, all the time and we are used to answer them and we over, over those years we we did hundreds of of professional projects for the industry so my my experience is is based 
on these projects. So I have a couple of points I would like to I would like to speak about and uh, to compare open source with commercial codes, which which is uh, obvious alternative to 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 what's uh, what what are open sources. So uh, the first point I would like to speak about is uh, the accuracy accuracy of, of the results of engineering simulations because from the experience with our users and and colleagues and and friends we, we know that the accuracy is is a big is the biggest perhaps the biggest concern of, of all of them uh, all the engineers uh, are very like that uh, they are specializing on accuracy because uh, accuracy is is uh, really a really big issue and no one as far as i know no one is is uh, like no one is uh, uh, willing to to make any compromises regarding the accuracy so if if you offer to someone a great software which is quick but it's it's not accurate no one will ever use it if you offer a robust software which is not accurate no one will ever use it and try it so accuracy is biggest point and i'm gonna talk about it a little bit uh, actually i believe that the open source uh, projects open source software uh, in these terms is is equal to to commercial codes uh, because uh, there, there are a couple of reasons of it. First of all, we in the past we did a lot of a lot of projects where we benchmarked and tested uh, comparisons of open source and commercial codes, and uh, it shows us again and again that they're like it's it's pretty strange, but they, they are equal. Both of them have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, open source open sources, for example. Uh, transparent because the, the source code is available and everyone can make sure what's what's really in inside what's uh, wh how, how how is the implementation and, and how is really how the problem being being solved but and on the other hand the commercial codes are like kind of black boxes where where no one really knows what's or no, the users don't know what's 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 inside but on the other hand uh, we know that that commercial commercial codes are always a little bit ahead ahead of open source projects and they have a lot of data and a lot of i would say experience in it like in, incorporated and involved and that means that uh, commercial codes this this let's say they are robust for sure so this robustness means that's a uh, kind of compromise uh, with uh, robustness and accuracy. But commercial codes have a lot of data and they have a lot of, uh, let's say, tricks and things how to how to how to compensate this disadvantage. So that that means regarding the accuracy, we, we, we have found that open source codes are the the, the the level of accuracy is the same uh, at open source pieces and commercial codes. Okay, I'll, I'll go to the next point. I have a couple of points. Uh, regarding the scaling potential, by scaling, uh, I mean that that if you if you increase uh, your resources, that means uh, uh, people, uh, hardware installations, uh, hard, hardware basically, and if you have more and more resources and you want to scale you have and you, and you want to make more and more results with it then it's definitely better to use open source because it scales uh, perfectly because you can you can it's it's free maybe maybe that's the point i, I should say in the beginning or open source is special software which is which is free it's shareable it's being shared uh, with its source code so anyone can use it compile it uh, uh, for free so regarding the scaling that means using more and more resources for uh, engineering simulations open source is uh, so much superior to to commercial codes because commercial codes is commercial codes is a software which is which is authorized by by the by the vendor by the authority by the creator who lets lets cares 
to to it's created for business, right? So so I guess this it's, this is clear. Okay, uh, yeah. Another point which is we, we found uh, it's very important. I call it a vision, a clear vision for for the future. So this is on the other hand uh, a big issue for open source projects because, uh, as you know, open sources are great. They're open, but they're kind of uh, they, they have issue with this vision because they're there's it, they're uh, often are missing a clear authority which which stands for the project, which takes all the responsibility and which really shows the uh, shows the shows the roadmap of 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 it and. Uh, uh, it's really missing a leader who, who stands for the project and that's really in, in the long term it, it shows uh, it's it's a big issue for open source uh, while commercial codes has they have clear uh, clear roadmap and everything so so regarding the uh, the vision of, of the software open source is greatly superior to to, to open source so so commercial codes are, are better for for the responsibility and, and everything. Okay, regarding the collaboration potential, that which means uh, if you want to, for example, share uh, the projects and the software with your colleagues and and uh, replace, for example, the, the people who use it and, and uh, uh, yeah, regarding, I mean, really the sharing it with with with, uh, with other offices, with other people, then open source is better than, than commercial code because it's uh, it's free and it's uh, freely shareable, and there are no no issues or no big issues with the licenses and and uh, with the source code. So regarding this thing, which we know, it's again very important for for many people who who use uh, simulations for uh, for who use software for simulations collaboration is very important and for for that is open source better than commercial codes okay i'll go a little bit ahead yeah uh, a big big issue uh, is user friendliness uh, i guess you know what's what's going on here uh, open source is typically not very user friendly because it's being developed uh, for the purpose not for the for, to be to be to be nice on the user so uh, open source is typically much much less user friendly than than commercial codes while commercial codes are created for business, they are created to 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 pleasure it, its users, and uh, they are definitely much more user friendly. And uh, I guess it, this is pretty clear. So I think I could I could go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Another point is the point we call vendor lock in. Which is which is a quite uh, interesting situation. It, it 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 means that in some cases it's very difficult for the users to change the technology because they they are used to use the, the original technology, and to switch to another system is sometimes very very difficult. So this situation is called vendor lock-in. It's being created uh, for all the software everywhere. It's it's quite normal, and both open source and commercial code create this situation. So if some, for example, if some engineering office is is used to to use some software, it's then very very difficult to change it for for another uh, for another code or for another service because the history and the, the path has been created using in. in uh, this such way and it's it's very difficult to switch to something else because otherwise the processes uh, would, would have to be changed and everything and all the changes are are also associated with a lot of fear of failure right and uh, uh, in in bigger in bigger offices it's very very difficult to, to make 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 any change 
So regarding the vendor lock-in, open source is still better because it doesn't cost much and, and it, you, it, people can use it uh, in parallel with, with commercial code and uh, it has definitely benefits compared to commercial code so regarding the vendor lock-in situation. Okay, another big thing uh, for, for the users is documentation. Uh, as I guess, I guess you know that uh, what's what's being what's being here. Uh, uh, open sources are they, they typically they typically have uh, yeah uh, quite 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 big issue with with documentation again because creating the documentation documentation is not the most popular thing among the developers and they like postpone it to the, to the latest possible time and and it's not uh, created for business, et cetera, et cetera. So documentation of open source is uh, very difficult because it's, it's been, it's scattered uh, everywhere and nowhere at the same time, right? It's scattered uh, in, in, in little fractions around the internet and open source users are many times uh, they they are like forced to 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 Google Google things and find informations everywhere and and nowhere at the same time. That's that's always a quite big deal and it also is associated with the uh, with the with the vision and authority thing. There are a lot of forks and a lot of uh, branches of open source uh, all the time and that's that that makes a big mess and users are sometimes. Uh, confused and and they give up early for example if many times it happens on the other hand commercial codes are much better for for documentation because the, they, they have good versioning and the documentation is is concentrated to to a single place associated with the technical support for example and that makes uh, really uh, may, makes it easier to use and, and and being reliable and up to date and everything. Okay, so I'll go to the next point, which is research. Uh, regarding the research, we believe that open source is much better than commercial commercial codes because uh, because uh, open source uh, has open code. So for that reason, it's very transparent, and the researchers they they know what what they can expect, and they can they can uh, implement new things and share it together in the community. And uh, open source is actually very very much suitable for for research. And uh, while commercial codes are much more rigid, right? They are, they are like black boxes. You can, they, they either work or don't work, and uh, the rest is the rest is uh, uh, many things are not possible in these terms. While uh, while open source is, is is much better for research. Okay, so. Uh, robustness is uh, another big point, which is very, very important for uh, many uh, software users, because uh, many times the, the physics, uh, which is beyond the, the, the simulation, is, is not stable. And like ro robust uh, solvers and codes have, they, they can take it, they can, they can converge, even if the if the settings is not the best or 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 where is the difficult physics so for this uh commercial codes are better than open source because uh open source is usually created for a single purpose which is which is a very very narrow field usually and uh, commercial codes uh, are uh, a couple all, all the time, couple of years uh, ahead, and they 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 are created for business. They are created to to stay all the conditions to be extremely stable to to play to 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 please the users. So regarding the robust robustness, commercial codes are, are the way better than open sources. So this is this is quite a big thing, and all the users users should be uh, aware of it. 
Okay, again, uh, the flexibility regarding, uh, if, if we ask how, how much we are flexible with the code, then the open sources are superior to commercial codes because again, the, the code is open, the, 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 the customization is possible. It's the open sources are typically very flexible and in good hands, it, it's, it's possible to create uh, nice new big projects regarding the capabilities and features and everything of the software uh, while while commercial codes are uh, are very rigid and they they either can work or can't work and that that's it what 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 can be done about it uh, another important point for for the users is the the level of technical support and for technical support, uh, the commercial codes are, are better than open sources. Uh, typically, commercial codes have professional technical support, which, which uh, has a certain level. With, while open sources, they, 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 they are services around them, of course, but they, they're associated with uh, uh, so very different quality of, of support and uh, that's that's a big issue of open source that, that, that it's it's a mess and uh, it's difficult to difficult to to find a service that that fits because it's again it's scattered everywhere around the internet and around the countries and and everything okay my uh, or one of, one of the last points I have uh, in this session is uh, the, the cost versus effort analysis. So I created such a, such a plot, which is, which shows, uh, it's just a scheme, right? It's just a scheme that shows that uh, while open source software is, uh, in terms of costs, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, always a little bit cheaper than uh, than commercial codes. But uh, there is a certain, always certain effort that has to be spent to to employ the the technology, and that's that's an issue. And the point is that, uh, for example, in in this uh, in this plot, you can see that the the A is solution, which is equal. To, to the A solution based on a commercial code or in open source. But while when you use the, the open source technology, you spend much more effort at much low, lower costs. And uh, on the other hand, when you use uh, this, uh, this technology, uh, you spend typically spend uh, less effort, but, uh, but at much, much higher, higher costs than, than with, with open source. So uh, that people are typically usually very surprised that the total cost of ownership is not that different. Yes, open source is cheaper, but not that much cheaper as you would expect in the first place because there are hidden costs. Those hidden costs are associated with the effort, right? And the effort is merely a, a cost uh, in, in a way, right? So uh, you can't avoid the effort, you can't avoid the costs, but you, by, by with choosing the open source or commercial, co uh, commercial codes, you can choose the, the ratio. Right, so you can't avoid soft, uh, you can't avoid effort, you can't avoid costs, but you can avoid you, you can you can you can choose the ratio between between how much work and and uh, actions are going, are needed to be taken to 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 get the to get the solution. So I hope this is clear. Maybe we can get back to it uh, if you if there will be some questions. And I'm going to make uh, some conclusions here in this phase. So open source is definitely a double-edged sword. That means it has very strong pros and very strong cons. It has very big advantages to uh, commercial codes, but it has big uh, disadvantages. So it's always up to the user. It's always up to the specific project that that's that needs to be used. 
uh, if you, if you uh, if, if you will ever hesitate what code you to use for your project please always think about what's your goal goal is absolutely important what's your goal what would you want to achieve exactly in detail imagine in really in detail what's your goal then you definitely have to look uh, for the technical fit the, the technically uh, the the solution must be capable to 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 do what you need to do then definitely think about who is the user who are the users who, who will run the simulations who will who will do the setup who will who will do the analysis who will understand the results and uh, interpret it in a, in the correct way always think about the costs and effort because um, so if if something is cheap or free in the beginning it it doesn't definitely doesn't mean it's free uh, uh, in in terms of total total costs of ownership and always think how the knowledge uh, will 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 flow into your project who will who will give you the knowledge how, how to use things how to where the technical support comes from where's the documentation and how you will proceed regarding the knowledge management it's a really really important thing and project by project it shows to be very important so what really matters uh we, we for, for 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 the projects for hundreds of projects we did uh, in the past we we realized that the code itself is, is worthless it, it doesn't mean anything and it's it's useless unless you have a clear uh clear goals and uh clear uh, uh path to, to to your goals so what matters uh, to our experience is 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 the skills of the users it's the experience of the users it's the definitely the, the patience and the dedication that these these um, uh, abilities they appear to be much more important than the code itself so my that's uh, one point and i'm finishing uh, with that that more thoughts about the, on this topic uh, i i have written down and it's it's available on on my on my you can see it through my LinkedIn, linkedin profile so feel free to to get in touch uh, we are we are linkedin and and we can we can discuss further and definitely you can you can read it because i'm, I'm not sure I, I made my points clearly today so yes i think this would be it for the for the open source quick general presentation so i think it's this so anyone still here Josef? i'm still here i was listening very great presentation quite quick though um maybe we have any questions already guys if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat and uh Lubos is probably so kind to answer them absolutely and by the way, we also have Lubos in another session in the science circle where he will introduce the tool. So I would like to ask you to give a demonstration, but I think you'll do that in the next session, if you can. Uh, However I you want so, it. So, so do you do you want me to 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 start or or will? I mean, if you want, if for... you, I mean, we have the time, Lubos. If you want, you can show the platform. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I intentionally did not prepare uh, anything that, that much in details. I have just uh, some general talk about about uh, how to simulate the the rotating machinery, specifically the pump, and I have a couple of uh, you know experiences and and general general thoughts that I'd like to share with with the audience. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I don't see any questions coming in. Maybe I can come up with one question, which is, do you see um, CFT support open sourcing your solution in the future at some point? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, uh, what what we definitely bet on. Uh, we 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 have we have mastered the the, the ability to to turn the open sources uh, into a professional professional tools. So so we we uh, we use open source into into our uh, into our packages. Of course, we have to. 
we have to clean them from 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 the bugs and we have to like pack them into into uh, let's say uh, a marketable and uh, into into the packages that, that are uh, useful for for the professionals for the engineers so so we create a graphical interface for it and we run uh, technical support and uh, create the documentation and uh, and all the stuff to make it usable because as you have seen in the uh, in the presentation uh, the, the pure open source packages there very very they have big advantages but big big disadvantages and they are very very difficult and complex to 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 use in the in the in the industry and and you know, for professionals. I see. What do you see then the business value of safety support? Because I feel in the business world, and you probably know way more than I do in this, there's this competition between value-based uh, value pricing and um, basically the pricing itself. So basically, if you open source everything, customers would or prospects would automatically go for the cheapest option. Um, so how do you actually differentiate yourself then? If everything is yeah, open yeah. source, is it the value itself, the service that you offer? It's kind of hard to understand how, how you would make money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it's, it, it's very difficult. Uh, first of all, I think uh, the, the CFD market is penetrated already. So there are a lot of solutions. Uh, it seems that everything is, is going to the cloud. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, of course, on-premise software available. And so so it's, 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 it's a mess, right? So... Yes, we have uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 a big issue. So, uh, first of all, everything is is developing very quickly. So, so our uh, value proposition is is going to the to the like multi physics and to to offer the whole. Uh, we call it simulation environment for for the users, uh, and it would be extremely flexible. So, so we are capable to to make it fit to the project goals and it's based on open sources so so yeah as, as, as mentioned before uh, we, we pick the the best the most promising open source pieces and th then we turn them uh, they, they remain of course open sources but we we help our users to to use them to take to, to use the benefits uh, in the, in a professional environment, and yes, uh, this this value proposition is is uh, is a big deal because, uh, uh, for example, open source itself is free, so anyone anyone can get it and and have it, and uh, while uh, commercial codes are pretty expensive, uh, we we can say so so we are somewhere in the middle, so so we are we are. We are benefiting from the from those who are, are willing to to pay for it, but not that much as as people who use commercial code. Yeah, I feel it would be interesting because a lot of participants here, either students or they want to delve into this field of CFD. Maybe give us the anecdote of when you actually started CFD support in the early beginnings. Like, what struggles did you encounter, and actually, how did you solve them, especially? maybe in the field of CFD, how did you get the first project in? How did you actually solve it? Maybe explain it from a business or startup perspective. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a long story, right? So, so it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm sure I can't, I can't say, say it in its whole complexity, but uh, we started uh, during our PhD studies uh, and uh, uh, we we had nothing in fact right we had we had no no business contacts we had no platform to start with we only knew we want to do something which makes sense which is on a very high level in uh, in terms of uh, programming new capabilities and and we always uh, wanted to do um, uh, the support, so that's 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 the name of our company, CFD support, because we wanted to. We always uh, knew that we want to support uh, professionals in their in their in their simulations, and we started as a consultancy business, right? Today, which is which is, uh, as I know, it's quite typical typical story because with nothing in hand, you you can only sell sell your time for, uh, for, for some reasonable. Uh, costs. So, so we started as a consultancy business, and 
it uh, was very difficult in the beginning because we had no 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 money no contacts no no experience it was really really difficult we had in fact we had nothing but but our passion for engineering software and it was very difficult in the beginning but yeah after uh, it was more than one year it was uh, the, close to two years actually we, we got our first projects in the field of rotating machinery and uh, since we, we we we've got our first projects then then things became became uh, start started becoming better and better and it was easier and easier for us to get new uh, new and new uh, projects but uh, a couple of years into the business we were not that much happy because um, the consultancy business is is actually very difficult right because the, the, there are some expectations from the from the from the the clients there are some there is some reality what you can deliver in in certain time and 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 the resources and everything so so it didn't make us happy uh, and uh, we after uh, i don't know three or four years into the business uh, we decided to put all our skills and passion and uh, experience into the package which was which was based on our so far gathered uh, experience so so we 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 turned our strategy to to deliver rather uh, the software solution now it's software environment because because it concerns much more than than just cfd so then, then we we changed it, and it's now much better because uh, with product you you it's it's much more fun, it's much more fun to sell product than than the than the services. Definitely. Really. How how do you actually? Thanks for giving us the, those insights. How do you actually tackle a CFD project from the beginning? I'm not sure if you're much too much into the details now of CFD, or if you're more the like the CEO and more the business guy now, or how do you? Generally, technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not kind of CEO, so, so I, I, mm. I don't, don't do projects anymore. I'm, mm. what I'm programming now is, is, is Excel sheets, but uh, uh, regarding the, the, you, you asked about the consultancy project management, how, how we do it, or generally how you approach CFD projects, because in the beginning it was very hard. How, for example, if you get your first client or you tackle a CFD project, now, where do you now, start? Now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now we are very happy with, with CFD projects because we only pick those we we like that they they that they have additional value for us and for for the for the for the product, right? Mm -hmm. So so we yeah. refuse like eighty percent of of them and we only pick those they perfectly fit, and in a way we would do it anyway, uh, even even without the project. So so we we pick such projects, and uh, then yeah, uh, it's. It's always the same. We always uh, we prefer to communicate very closely with our clients, and we are, I always ask them about the goals, about their goals, because it's it's absolutely critical to to be sure what needs to be done and what helps. And sometimes it looks like straightforward, but after discussion, uh, we we realize that it's not that straightforward at all, and it actually is the biggest and the number one problem of all projects specify the goal as clear as possible and uh, and uh, yeah uh, when when the goal is specified then we do typically for free we do the feasibility study which mm -hmm. is in, in sometimes sometimes it's 80 percent of the project right but uh, the feasibility study is something something small we can do right away on some simplified data or some dummy case we do uh we we do it we we test uh, everything what's needed and and see already some first results and then then we communicate it back back uh, with the users and only if if we if both sides both both sides see a value in it then then we like turn turn green and and uh and do the do the project so but it's for us we we have now the luxury of uh, uh, we have a chance to to do only those projects we we that that they help us they help our clients and they have additional value for for everybody concerned that's that's uh, a luxury we hadn't by far had in the in the beginnings. Yeah, I would say it's rather a luxury to have if you can client projects coming yes. in. 
yes, yes. Definitely. Um, I'm not sure if you're still in a hiring position, so I'm not sure. Probably a lot of people here are interested in uh, if they want to become CFD engineers. How does the job market look like? And would you advise people to go into the CFD world? And if so, should they maybe do a CFD plus AI, like synergy of uh, topics, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a couple of questions in one. Uh, mm. First of all, uh, regarding the, the HR, we, we're fine. We have we have a lot of interest uh, to, to work in our company. So, so we, we receive, we keep receiving spontaneous uh, applications, not every day, but a couple of them a week. And uh, so, so that's not a big issue at all. Uh, we, I, we prefer to work with young people who are rather uh, are in the beginning of their engineering journey and we teach them everything by, by us with our resources because that makes so much sense to us. And uh, as, as I guess you know that, that there are not uh, many ready-made people in the, in the, in the market. Uh, because the the field is is quite new and very quickly it's very quickly developing so so we always rather we always look for the potential rather than than you know uh, ready made skills so that's this uh, uh, I, yeah did you ask something with the the coding the C plus plus or or did I no you can you can answer no, that if you no. want you yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, it's, I, I don't know, yeah, it's, um, no, no, I, I, I'm fine. You, then maybe if you start to learn the CFD tool, maybe in uni, I think it would probably be something like open form, going back to the open source thing that you've discussed. I think open, open form is a good tool to start with. Anything else that you'd recommend, maybe in terms of coding or any other software tool? Uh, if, if you mean... You mean some open source, uh, for example? To... Could could be open source. Could be open source. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, open so open form is. I guess it's the most visible uh, and mm. most uh, you know shining uh, open source uh, among the among the simulation codes uh, for sure for 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 sure for CFD. And uh, uh, well. I'm not sure if I, uh, you know, this is this is we, we always say the 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 devil is always hidden in the detail, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very difficult in in these times to give general recommendations because it's uh, this is the, every project is different and every yeah. every case is different and every user and and uh, and group of colleagues in, in the office uh, they are different so. So it's very very difficult to make make uh, some uh, advices about that, but always I would always look for for what's the goal, uh, technical fit uh, as as I said in the in the uh, in the in the presentation and and how the, the the knowledge will be acquired what what will be the knowledge management that's extremely critical. Yeah, it feels like a little bit. Great insights. I was asking that particularly because obviously everyone has like their own path and different projects and so on and so forth. But I feel like I'm asking that specifically because sometimes we can avoid or people can avoid a lot of time wasted if they follow a particular path or avoid doing specific mistakes. If you get what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's an eternal question if if it's possible to avoid mistakes and learn, mm. right? It's it's a, it's a question for me. I don't know. Uh, yes, we all did. Uh, uh, we all did along, along our journey a lot of mistakes. The question is if we, if we would take any lesson of it, if we wouldn't make them. But, but uh, my personal uh, number one advice for learners is learn by doing things. Learn by doing. Do things, do things, and try and learn and try. And trial and error method is actually not bad if you do it quickly, promptly, and learn from your from your mistakes. For example, in CFD, we know very well that learning those those books, you know, those, those large books, it doesn't help too much because mm -hmm. uh, theory is one thing and, and uh, really doing things uh, and quick feedback from, from, from the results is uh, another uh, yeah, another way, uh, another thing. So, so if I if I should say uh, one recommendation, learn by doing, do things, give, try, try, and fight. Great, great advice. 
if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap it up and give people 15 minutes back of their life and you, Lubos, as well. Um, guys, come on, ask some questions if you want. I'll give you one minute. Otherwise, we'll call it a day. And by the way, Lukash, in the meantime, when people type in, hopefully, their questions, I think we haven't defined a date yet for the pump tutorial. I think we'll take that offline then via email. I think we haven't fixed the date yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Let's, let's do it. I, I, I'm fine. Uh, I'm, if, if you uh, like, I'm, I'm available right now uh, but we can be but we can we can we can schedule it to to uh to another to another uh, the day or or i can i can record it maybe because it's it, it would yeah. be just they, definitely yeah definitely you can also record it and maybe um people can also get access to your tool right for a month i think with, yes, with yes, yes 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 absolutely yeah 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 be Very be cool. sure just uh, i i would have a recommendation for this so so go to a website there is there just click for the for the trial then you will find it in the in the product there, there's a trial you re, you send a request for the trial and make sure you will write there a special note which will be uh, Yosef uh, Science Academy, maybe, mm -hmm. and yeah. and I, I and I will know it, and I will give you uh, some some extended version because we normally provide the trial version for two weeks, because we believe it's it's uh, the way enough to to learn it does what we say it does, and uh, yeah, so let's make it one month or or it can or, or yeah sure we it can be extended it's not not a big deal if it helps so so we can extend it so anytime. We want to so. make. Really cool. Thank you so much, Lubos. And I want to make sure yeah, if yeah. people use it, they take some screenshots from their projects and post it on social media and tag Lubos. That's a request um, so that also Lubos has something from it. Um, cool. Really cool, Lubos. Would be really great to stay in touch. And then if you have any questions, guys, to Lubos, find him on LinkedIn or via cfdsupport.com yeah. as I've just posted. Cool. Thank you so much for the talk. It would be great, Lubos, if you could send me the slides maybe so we can upload them in the I sense. will. I will. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Let's call it a day and then, uh, yeah. Thank in you. 30 minutes, we Thank have to talk about that sportsman. Thank you so much, Lubos. Yeah, great. Yeah, Take care. have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.